Um, sorry I couldn't make it into class again today, um, but today we were going to go over some levels of um, different types of research. This won't be a very long lecture. Um, it's pretty concise, so it will be an easy voiceover, and then you have an assignment to do um, at the end of it. So here's a picture of your open outline. You just want to follow along um, and fill in the blanks as I talk through this. Um, but in general, there's three types of um, research that um, when we're looking at um, the lit search for our clinically appraised topic projects that you'll be doing, there is retrospective research, there's prospective research, and there's compilations. So we'll go through each of these categories. Um, retrospective research is research that has already been done. So you need to write in already been done. And the researchers are looking at the factors that may have affected the outcomes. The incident has occurred and the data has been gathered. Uh, the research then develops the question based upon the available data. Um, examples of these would be investigation of risk factors such as maybe gender, a previous history, um, or hamstring strength for a collegiate athlete who has experienced a non-contact ACL injury. So looking back on it, retrospective. So under this um, box here, um, we have three types of retrospective. So under here, you can write in case reports, case series, and case controls. Case reports, case series, and case controls. And we'll go over those individually, um, but those are all retrospective research studies. They do not have a lot of strength in their study, so um, for your clinically appraised topic we're going to try to steer away from retrospective studies. Um, the next one is prospective studies, and for prospective study um, a question and variables are developed first. Questions and variables are developed first, and then data is collected. For example, an investigation of the effects of a six weeks balance program on posture control. So they have a question, they'll um, run the study and then gather the data. There are two main types of prospective studies. One is a cohort study and the other one is a randomized controlled trial. Um, these are higher levels of evidence. We um, really want to go after these types of studies when you're working on your literature review or gathering research articles for your clinically appraised topic. The next one is compilation research. Compilation research can include retrospective or prospective research and it brings together a collection of data from various studies. So this will look at many studies, um, research studies, and bring the information all together and give you um, one statement or recommendation. Um, the assessment, for an example, it would be something titled the assessment of studies that have investigated the impact of stretching on an injury risk. So you've got all these studies that they've looked at and they're going to give you the overall um, summary of the impact of stretching on injury. Compilation studies consist of two kinds. There is systematic reviews and meta-analysis. Systematic reviews and meta-analysis. So we're going to briefly go through each of these um, seven types of studies so that you know what they are and what you want to look for um, when you're looking up research articles for your clinically appraised topic. So the first one, case reports, that came under um, the retrospective study. Case reports are a collection of data on a single patient, usually for a rare or unique event. And while this is interesting um, information, it's usually not very applicable to a larger group. So we are not going to utilize case reports in our clinically appraised topic. It just doesn't span enough um, of a population. So an example would be clavicular fracture in a collegiate football player, a case report of rapid return to play. It even tells you what it was in the title, so no question about the type of article. Case series are collections of information about a course of treatment or intervention. Course of treatment 
or intervention. So our example here is ultrasound and joint mobilizations to achieve um, normal wrist range of motion after an injury or surgery and a case series. Again, it told you right in the, in the title what it was, a case series. So they looked at um, the use of ultrasound and joint mobilization um, with um, probably several athletes that had wrist injuries. A case control is observing a patient who has a particular condition, or we call it the case, a particular condition while also looking at individuals who do not have the condition, and those are considered the controls. Um, this actually is the most commonly reported type of research in athletic training. Um, the example I have here is functional performance testing in participants with functional ankle instability and in a healthy control group. So we have a case and then we have a healthy a control group. So um, well again, we prefer maybe not to use these types of articles. Um, usually the population is pretty restricted um, as we look at them. The types of studies that we really want to use for uh, clinically appraised topics are our prospective studies. That can be either a cohort or a randomized controlled trial. A cohort in studies a group of individuals that share a common experience over a period of time. Usually the group is free of the condition at the beginning of the study and over time they're separated into groups based on the exposure to risk factors associated with the condition. An example here is um, identification of cardiometabolic risk among collegiate football players. So they're a group of individuals, collegiate football players, who share a common experience, um, cardiometabolic risks, over a period of time. They were free from the condition at the beginning of the study, and over time they were separated into groups based on exposure to risk factors. Um, the gold standard that we would prefer to use then is um, the randomized control trials. So if you find an article that says RT, RCT or a randomized control trial, um, that would be the preferred type of study. Um, the gold standard of experimental research. Participants with the same conditions are randomly assigned to a group, and the group is either experimental or control. The experimental group will receive an intervention and the control group then receives nothing, a placebo, or a different treatment. And then the outcome is evaluated. That would be the ideal study that we look at. An example would be the magnitude of tissue cooling during cryotherapy with varied types of compression. So they had um, a group that received um, compression um, of one kind and then another group that received compression of a different kind and probably a third group because they say varied types of compression um, received a, a separate second or third I mean type of compression in this study and then they compared all the results. Um, there's other types, two other types of um, studies. One is um, a systematic review um, which is a gold standard for making clinical decisions. However, this is not the type of study that we're going to utilize primarily for our clinically appraised topic. It's a good study, though, if you need a kind of a quick answer in making a clinical decision. Um, it's a collection of evidence from multiple research studies, so multiple research studies, through rigorous literature searching and clinically appraised processes. Um, many differences between literature the main difference between a lit review and a systematic review is that the lit review does not include a critical analysis. So some of you, um, as you're looking through articles, may come across the literature review where they say, um, this is what is being recommended for um, treatment of um, a knee injury. Um, but a um, systematic review um, will include a critical analysis of all the articles that were looked at. Literature reviews usually just look at a few recommendations um, in the literature and, and write up a compiled paper. This example is quadricep activation following knee injuries, a systematic review. I told you exactly what it was. So they didn't do original research, they just looked at research that was already done 
and brought the results together. A meta-analysis is really similar to a systematic review, um, it, but it's going to have statistical information. So it combines statistical information, usually from RCTs, um, to provide an overall statement of a treatment effect. An example here would be um, concentric everter strength differences and functional ankle instability, a meta-analysis. Told you exactly what it was. So my point in showing you is there's different types of research um, that you'll find as we go into our literature review for your clinically appraised topics. Um, what we're looking to find, though, is original research that was done with a control. And so what we want you to look after primarily is looking for cohort studies and RCTs, randomized control studies in this group here. Um, we want you to stay away from case reports, case series, and case controls. They aren't very strong evidence. And um, as we get into this, we have to evaluate these articles. Um, so again, we want you to stay away from systematic reviews and meta-analysis because it becomes really difficult um, to analyze these compilation studies because a compilation study like a systematic review may have looked at 10 different randomized controlled trials which means in order to do your clinically appraised topic you're going to have to individually tease out the results of each 10 of those studies they looked at so hopefully that makes sense um, the only other thing then I wanted to make you aware of is something called levels of evidence so levels of evidence is how strong an article actually is, how valid the article is, not, however, how clinically applicable is the article. Um, but when you put together a, um, a clinically appraised topic project like you're going to be doing over the next two years, um, it has to be stated what the level of evidence is for every article that you look at. So what we want you to do is to look for the strongest level of evidence, which would be level one. Um, and I've already talked about this, but level one evidence would be randomized controlled trials, meta-analysis, or systematic reviews. However, we want you to not utilize meta-analysis and systematic reviews because they're very difficult um, to analyze. Um, it's easier to take one original study a randomized control trial and look at it, that. You could use cohort studies. They have a fairly high level of evidence, a level two, um, but we want you to stay away from any of the case controls, case reports, um, ideas, editorials, opinions, um, staying away from things that are titled literature reviews. Don't use those um, for your clinically appraised topic articles. Um, again, a level one evidence would be the strongest a randomized control trial. So hopefully that helps you understand the difference between different types of research um, articles. If we look on um, Moodle um, today, um, I'll go ahead and post this outline or voiceover and you can fill out your outline and then you have a little assignment that is due on September 1st levels of evidence so click on that and go ahead and complete that and turn it in on Moodle, it's due at class time on next Tuesday. And then your clinical questions um, are also due from your group. Each group member should submit the clinical question. So even though you'll have maybe three of you with the same clinical question, each of you should submit that same clinical question so that you get points for that. And then I've postponed the quiz until September 5th. Um, so and those are the topics that we'll be covering, but you guys probably already knew that. So. Uh, if you have any questions, give me, um, shoot me an email, and I'll try to help you. Otherwise, have a great weekend, and um, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Thanks.